Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. We're looking at this today, which is the Topps Light Trekker. And I got intrigued by this knife because I was looking at it on their website and I think probably at one of the, the um, industry shows and just thought, that thing is small, but it looks like it would be really effective at what it would do. So 8.75 inches from end to end, 4.25 inches for your blade, and just over five ounces. So it is a very lightweight knife, a little bit over seven ounces when you add in the sheath. But um, yeah, you know, I've been intrigued by this. I wanted to take it out and uh, put it through some work and see how it worked. So uh, yeah, let's do that together. So you look at the sheath system real quick here. It is Kydex. You do have the uh, spring clip on the back that is metal. You do have also here the fire steel and magnesium. If you've never seen this before, this is a standard for a lot of tops items. But that top one I've used a little bit is the fire steel and those bottom two uh, bars or tubes are magnesium. Fits into the sheath. Let me see if I can actually get it to fit now. There we go. Fits into the sheath, it does come with a whistle. It also comes with a scraper, which is a little piece of hacksaw blade there. I'll show that to you. That's what that looks like. Make sure that you keep that because the spine of this knife is not 90 degrees. Now you can you know, take a Dremel tool and put a 90 degree spine on there, but as is, it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna do the job. I have heard, have heard some people say on their knives, if you use close up to the tip, even if not, you know, certainly the blade, but you don't wanna do that. But if you use close to the tip, it'll get a, get a spark. It's just a lot of work. So keeping that little, um, that little piece of hacksaw blade, you know, even if you take the, um, take the whistle off and then just tape the hacksaw blade up to the sheath, you should be good to go. This spring steel uh, clip is, I really like it. And the other thing about it is that it, um, it rotates. So depending on how you want to set your, you know, set your sheath up at a cant, you know, however you want to rock it, you can do that with this clip. And I've used this on, I think the bob was the other main one that I used it on, and it, it worked great. Never had any issues, never snapped, never bent out to the point of not working. But as a quick look at your, your system. As far as your knife, you got my card for the handles. You do have a bunch of different options for this. So you got black is going to be your blade, but I've got the brown and brown. There's a brown and like lime green option. There's a brown and... Um, brown and orange option there's a gray option so a couple different you know ways you can get this guy set up when you actually purchase it off the tops website or you know other retailers who sell it got the nice liners in there got some red liners with that black and that brown and uh comfort wise it is a small handle but i find because the knife overall is small it seems to just like when it when i grab it in my hand i'm like yes i like the way that feels i like for example the silent hero but i find the handle to be a little bit small for me compared to the size of the blade. So this one, size of the blade, proportion of the handle, this just seems to work well. It seems to be what I would want in a knife. Here's a look at it in the sheath, and I would tell you right off the bat, um, I'd, I'd re-secure these. I took them off when I took it out of the box and was checking out the knife, but I would re-secure these because that's gonna make noise and dangle, and there's a chance it could even pop off while you're walking. But that said, let me just remove this so you can see it without that block in the view. Very nice, sleek, compact system. And again, if you want to re-angle this, got to hold it tight to actually spin it. But, you know, however you want to set it up, cant it the other way, cant it at a 45 degree. And I, I'm telling you, I put it on my sheath, on my uh, belt, and I'm like, that is definitely does not feel like, here's a ton of extra weight. Very lightweight, compact, slick little knife. This thing is definitely not made to be a chopping tool, but if you had to, you can run your fingers through the lanyard. I've actually looped it through a couple times to get the right kind of angle and setting. So three fingers through, and then I can get my, my uh, hand around the base like this and do a little chopping like so. So like I said here, it's not built to be a chopping tool, but it'll do a little bit of work for you if you had to uh, had to use it in that fashion. Is there a little feather sticking here? This wood is a little more damp than I would normally like, but since we've started, let's keep working with it. Trying a couple different grips here. I'm actually holding it like this now. I was holding it like this before, just to mix it up. Get my thumb up on the jimping to see how that feels. As you would expect, because it's a smaller knife, it's gonna be very manageable as far as, you know, 
the control you feel like you have over it. Yeah, this thing is, because this wood is a little bit damp, it's not giving me those big curls, but nonetheless, you can see it'll, it'll do that work. Here's a look at some other feather sticks I made. You're probably not surprised. Like, I'm not surprised that it definitely did the job well. Just to show you here that the fire steel will work. We can get a, uh, some of these feathers to start up. There we go. In the last survival seminar that I was teaching, we actually worked on making, uh, you know, filters for water that can get a lot of that sediment and stuff using, you know, like a Gatorade bottle or an old water bottle. So let's uh, let's see how this guy cuts into this. I will tell you that this Gatorade frost bottle is quite, it's not really, you know, wimpy and soft. It's quite, quite, uh, it's pretty thick. So let's see how this guy does just one of these utility tasks. Got to be really careful, you know, you don't want to stab into your hand. So I'm cutting away from myself now carefully and slowly. Yeah, once you get in though, this thing, no problem. And that, uh, that tip works well to get into the, uh, into the bottle. They're calling that a hunter's tip. Just to show you what that looks like there. So yeah, so you know, if you had to cut into that and then start making your filter easy enough to do, and then, you know, if you want to trim off the edge a little bit to make it a little bit cleaner of an edge. This is actually a way you can make cordage too. This is too thick here, but you can make cordage out of plastic, you know, by circling the bottle again and again and again. But just to show you, again, gotta be really careful. A good way to do this is actually put your knife into a log and then roll your, roll the plastic bottle around. So anyhow, here's a piece of the cordage and what this would look like. So some of that, you know, more detail work and especially if I had like a big log to work on, that'd be even easier. But um, yeah, good tip for piercing. And despite the fact that the handle is small, like I said, it is quite comfortable with all the feather sticking I did and cutting this and a couple other cuts. No issues whatsoever with the handle. I'm enjoying it. All right, so some initial thoughts on this. Um, and I say initial because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this more, do a bunch of carving, do a bunch more feather sticking, just use it in general so I'm not like, you know, I did three cuts, here's my review. I just don't think that's a good way to do it. Um, that being said, so far I've liked it, it's worked well. And um, yeah, small, lightweight, comfortable. Uh, if they made this in a satin finish instead of the black traction coating, I would like that even more. Your Rockwell hardness 56 to 58, which is, it's pretty standard for a lot of Topps knives, so that's good. Um, the main advantage is the compact, lightweight nature of it. You get a fire steel with it, that's a plus. So yeah, we'll use this a little bit more and then report and let you know what we think about the Topps Light Trekker. Back here now to wrap up talking about the Topps Light Trekker. Let me talk about some of the positives and then maybe some of the uh, the negatives or the growth opportunities when it comes to the, uh, the Topps Light Trekker. First thing is I like the handle, um, despite the fact that it is a smaller knife, I do find it really easy to hold on to and to use for all kinds of cutting and carving tasks. Um, it's weird, maybe it's for me because I like a slightly larger handle usually and a more neutral handle. Uh, maybe it's the middle size that is just not comfortable for me. Uh, so large is good and then something smaller like this is good. It does give you good grip even though there's not a ton of contouring on the actual, you know, this portion of the handle. These little kind of divots, inlays, whatever you want to call them, that gives you good solid control when you're doing when you're doing your, uh, your cutting tasks. Um, I like the fact that you get multiple options for the handle. This is the brown with the, the black steel, obviously, and then the red liners. Like I said, you get that lime green, you get that blaze orange, a bunch of different options for you. So I think that's that's cool. Uh, light Trekker is definitely one of the key concepts. I think that's a win for this knife. It is super lightweight. Uh, as you saw on the chopping test, it's not gonna be a great chopper, but it can do some you know small chopping if you had to. Um, but the fact that it's so lightweight and you have a stout full tang knife that's you know able to do a lot of different tasks. I think that's definitely 
definitely a win for this. Uh, the sheath, let me just take this out here. The sheath overall, I like the uh, clip. I like, um, I like the, fact, the fact that they include the fire steel, um, but that kind of shifts us over to some of the things maybe I'm not a huge fan of. Um, this particular fire steel with the magnesium and fire steel, I just want straight fire steel. That's gonna work better for me as opposed to those two magnesium rods. Um, one of the challenges of maybe, I can't think of a top knife that doesn't have this challenge, but it's because the way they do the heat treat, you don't have a uh, 90 degree spine. So I'm gonna actually talk to them about that just to get a little bit more insight and ask them if they've ever thought about adding you know, that as an option. I realize it would be more work for them, but it seems like that's a, a standard issue for, that people have with top knives. Top knives is the lack of a 90 degree spine. That would, I think, probably push their game up pretty significantly. So. Um, I like the sheath overall. The magnesium I could do without. I could just do with a straight up uh, ferro rod. I like the fact that they do include the um, <clears throat> the whistle and the scraper, so it's not a huge deal. But again, when you're walking, and then you got to tape it if not. And I just like it a little bit more streamlined with all out the extra kind of bells and whistles. I think the main challenge for the knife overall is just your price point. It's not as expensive as a lot of other Topps knives. You're looking about 105 up to 113, 115. So you're spending less than other Topps knives, which would make sense because it's a smaller knife. Um, but if people are looking at this, they're probably looking at something like maybe the Rat 3. This thing is a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller um, in general, I would say. But you know, you can get a, a Rat for easily under 100 bucks, particularly for those sizes. And so I think people are going to be like, well, you know, what's the plus and minus of getting this versus getting that? If you're trying to save uh, every single possible ounce, then I think this is going to be a knife that you're going to want to go to just because it is lightweight for its size and what it offers. If you're looking to say, well, I don't want a huge knife, weight is something I'm thinking about, but I'm not, it's not do or die for me, then you're probably going to look for something else just because you can, um, you could save some money. When I think of this knife, I think of somebody who maybe is doing extensive hiking on something like the Appalachian Trail, maybe long portions or doing the whole thing, and they're like, I want a fixed blade, I want a strong knife, I want a good knife, um, and I want something that's going to be reduced in weight, but I'm not willing to just go to a folding knife, then this could be something that you definitely want to uh, definitely want to check out. You know, for other people who are like, I want a big hefty knife to get out into the woods and do some some aggressive work, work with, uh, this is just not going to be the knife. It's not designed for that. I think the major win of this is comfort and then your your weight compared to what you're getting uh, in the knife. Again, the, the challenge for some people with Topps knives is that you're going to pay, you know, over $100 in most cases for their fixed blades and sometimes twice that, um, you know, depending on what you're getting. But um, I, I will tell you that they have a very good reputation as far as working with people if they have issues with the knives, standing behind their warranty, their, um, they're, they're just a quality company and they stand behind the products that they make. So yeah, Tops Light Trekker. It's been fun to use, been fun to test out. And I've got links down below if you wanna check these out over at Amazon. Again, purchasing this item or any other items via that link down below in the description section will send you over to Amazon and that'll help support the Everyday Tactical Vids channel. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. If you wanna see some more videos, we got some right over there. Don't forget to subscribe and check us out on social media outlets like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr as well. As always, more videos coming soon. Take care.